Last week, I cut most of the pieces needed to make the case of the rounded and backed case book. In this video, I'll put the case together. And something doesn't go to plan, and you'll get to see what Daz does to get myself out of a pickle. I'll start with an easy job, putting the cloth corners on. The most important part of this job is getting the cloth aligned with the diagonal line on the board and the turn-ins roughly equal. The corners are oversized and get trimmed, so the turn-ins don't have to be perfectly equal. I don't glue the turn-ins yet, so this gives me somewhere to hold the corners. I then use my 15mm gauge to trim the turn-ins. You can buy metal gauges, but they're easily made from scrap grey board and once they get covered in glue you can make another one. The corners are trimmed diagonally one and a half board thicknesses away from the corner. In my case that would be 3.6 millimetres. My eye isn't that good so I'll shoot for 4 millimetres. You can cut the corners with a ruler judging the angle by eye. You can make it more complex by using a square. And you can make it more expensive by buying a corner cutting jig. Because I'm cheap, I don't have any of these. Plus, my preferred method is just to cut the corners by eye with scissors. Using scissors is super fast and not difficult. I've never ruined a corner ever, so it can't be hard to do. When turning in corners, always do the head and tail first. Push the little piece right at the corner down the edge of the board. The best explanation I have of why the head and tail are done first is that this little piece now running down the edge of the board makes a slight bump and you wouldn't want the bump on the high wear edges. Thank you. 
When attaching the board to the spine cloth, you have two options, glue the board or glue the cloth. I prefer to glue the cloth, though in this case, because it's so dry in the bindery, I do put a bit of glue on the board as well. I seldom have problems with this step and use my usual EVA, but I often have students have issues on this step and as a precaution, I usually have them use mix so we can pull the case apart and adjust if needed but I'm going to forge ahead with EVA and work without a safety net. I'll position the boards and draw around them so I know where to apply the adhesive. I have to keep track of the front and back boards so I don't put them on the wrong way around. I glue out the cloth for the back board first and position it. I then glue out the other side and put the spacer in place and my ruler along the tail edge to get the boards aligned. I then place the second board in place. In a perfect world you would flip the case and the second board will have split the pencil line. Today wasn't my day. The board was aligned with the line at the tail and there was a gap over a millimetre wide at the head. This was not acceptable for me without some further consideration. I have a number of options at this point. Remake it and throw this video away and you'd never know. This was tempting. But when I'm teaching this book, this isn't an option. And if I was doing production work, I'd also fix it rather than remake it. So this is the thought process I go through when things don't go to plan. The process is this. Can I identify what caused the problem? And if I can, can it be fixed? If it can't be fixed, what is the impact of leaving it as is on the finished book? If with minor adjustments the impact on the book is minimal, then move forward. If the impact will detract from the finished book, then try and undo the work and stabilise to give time to fix the underlying problem. My initial thought was that I stuffed up. Did you notice how the book cloth had a broad crease running up the spine? Well, I noticed it when I was positioning the spacer between the boards. I immediately thought this had caused me to not get the spacer positioned correctly. I thought I'd identified the problem and I knew if I moved quickly I could pull the cloth off the board and redo it but taking more care next time. I did this and the result was exactly the same. This meant my understanding of the problem was wrong. I have to work out what the problem is to decide what to do next. I carefully check the width of the spacer and between the boards. It turns out the problem's not there. Maybe the boards are not aligned at the head and tail. Nope, that's not it either. Maybe the lines in the board are not equally spaced out from the spine edges. Nope, not that either. The last thing I check is the width of the spine cloth. And sure enough, it's slightly narrower at the end where it's inside the line by about the same amount. Coincidence? I'll let you be the judge. This is great news. The case is square and the space between the boards is correct and I have a simple fix which will make this unnoticeable in the finished book. 
This means I can move forward as is. I'm going to blame that crease again. I think it caused my measurement error when cutting the spine cloth to width. If I was using one of the fast high-tack PVAs used in commercial binderies, I wouldn't have been able to pull them apart like I did. As it turned out, I would have been fine anyway. I draw lines along the edges of the board so I know where to position the spine stiffener. I trim the turn-ins. I glue out the spine stiffener and position this centred by eye. It's very dry in the bindery at the moment, so I glue up both the card and the cloth. Normally I glue the cloth only and moisten the card with water like I did for the craft paper spine lining. You may have noticed I did this on the board too, which I normally don't. When I do the turn-ins for the spine cloth, I draw the cloth inwards over the spine stiffener. Because it's thinner than the board, it has a tendency to want to poke up a bit above the height of the boards. Try to stop it doing this or it will be a wear point. Work the cloth down the edges of the board into the joint area. You might need to hold the cloth down into the joint for a minute to let the glue to tack, especially if you're using mix. You can also close the case up and push down on the bench to help the cloth tack. The last job in this video is putting on the board papers, often called siding up. The board papers overlap the cloth by 3mm, an eighth of an inch. I'll set the dividers to 3mm and make prick marks around the case on the edges of the cloth. Here is where I get to hide my little spine cloth issue. At that edge, instead of measuring in 3mm from the edge of the cloth, I do it from the exposed line. Now the edge of the paper is exactly where it was always going to be and no one will notice the slight smaller overlap of the cloth and paper in this spot. I've got two pieces of decorative paper larger than I need and with straight edges. Squareness is not important as the turn-ins will get trimmed once the paper is attached. It's a paper with a pattern that I need to make sure is up the same way on the front and back I follow the convention of the combing of the marbled pattern going downwards. I position the paper over the prick marks on the spine cloth and make pencil registration marks at the edges of the board. Holding the paper firmly in place, I fold up the corners so that a crease just covers the prick marks on the corner cloth. I also rub the paper down over the edges, also called breaking the paper over the edges, so I know where to apply the glue. Once I've folded back both corners, I can take the paper off the case and finish the folds and trim the corners off.
I now glue out the paper and apply to the case using the pencil registration marks as guides. I would highly recommend using mix the first few times you do this step. Once you get the hang of it, it's fairly easy. If you apply the paper and it doesn't cover the prick marks, you know the problem. Cut the paper too short. There's no satisfactory fix for this, so take the paper off and cut a new piece. Finally, it's a simple matter of trimming the turn-ins, gluing them and turning them in. In the next and final video in the series, I'll put everything together in the process called casing in. As always, I really appreciate you hitting the big thumbs up button. If you're able and want to, you can support the making of more videos like this through Patreon or with a one-off contribution, and the details are in the description below. If you want to be notified of my future videos, please hit the subscribe button and select the notification bell. Until next time, cheerio.